here with the ve vegetables. I almost said vegetables instead of vampires. Wow. <laughs> Jay and today I'm here with my November wrap-up for 2018. I read a total of 13 books but I'm only going to talk about the first seven in this wrap-up and I'll post my part two on Wednesday. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I read, I actually have a full review of on my channel so you can totally check out that to see my full thoughts but it is Renegades by Marissa Meyer and I gave it a five out of five stars. Absolutely loved it but like I said, check out the review if you want my full thoughts. So the next book that I read is Cruel Beauty by Rosamund Hodge and I ended up giving this a three out of five stars. I was initially super excited about this because because a fairy tale retelling b haters to lovers trope which i am here for but definitely fell short for me it's about a girl named nyx who has been destined to marry the gentle lord ignifex for pretty much her entire life after her father made a deal with him ever since she was younger she's been training in order to kill ignifex once she is pawned off to him so on her 17th birthday she is married to ignifex and her quest to kill him and free Arcadia from its 900 year old curse begins. So like I said I was initially really excited about it but definitely fell short for me. The book started off really strong and the whole concept was really intriguing but it just went downhill as the story progressed. By the end of the book I was just more annoyed than anything else. The love triangle really pissed me off and I think that it was really unnecessary in my opinion. I also just really hated the insta love but I did like the the witty banter between Ignifex and Nyx that was probably my favorite part of the story. I did enjoy Nyx for the most part. I really liked how headstrong and determined she was to defeat Ignifex even after she fell in love with him she was still like I'm going to kill you like just so you know. But then at times she really pissed me off and I wanted to hit her and her just going back and forth throughout the whole story and her actions were just so annoying at times. I also really enjoyed Ignifex. I think that he was my favorite character. He developed very well and his whole like growth was really well done and I also really liked the whole idea of the castle changing and every time you went into a room or opened a door it was something different. I thought that was really cool. I think that the ending was really disappointing. I was honestly just left confused and I wasn't really sure what was going on. Overall, I think it was average and it definitely wasn't my favorite fairy tale retelling. The next book that I read was Keep Her Safe by Sophie Hanna and I ended up giving this a three out of five stars as well. It follows a woman named Cara Barrows who's very fed up with her unsupportive family. So she decides that she is going to book herself a two week vacation in a five star hotel in America. So upon arriving to the hotel, she goes up to her room and she quickly discovers that that there's already a man and his daughter occupying the room. So after getting her new room assignment, she realizes that the little girl who was in her room was actually the most famous murder victim in America, Melody Chapa. And it's basically the story of her trying to figure out if this is actually Melody Chapa and how that is possible since it was such a huge news story a couple years back. Honestly, I was just bored throughout this story. The whole book just seemed to drag on for me and nothing actually happened for most of the book. I also just hated all of the characters. They were all so unlikable with like no redeeming factors. Like Kara was so whiny about everything. Taryn was just a huge bitch. Juno Bonnie, Bonnie, Juno, whatever her name was, was just rude to literally everybody. I just didn't care for any of them. The middle of the book was where I kind of started to care about what happened to Melody, but then by the end of the book, once you actually found out what happened to Melody, it was so far-fetched and dragged out that it just wasn't a huge reveal. Like, it was just like, that's really dumb. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on the book. Like, it was just not very good good but I wanted it to be good if that makes sense but like definitely not the best murder mystery 
that I've read. The next book that I read was Don't You Cry by Mary Kubica and I ended up giving it a 4 out of 5 stars. It follows a girl named Quinn who ends up going clubbing one night leaving her sick roommate Esther at home and when she returns the next morning she realizes that Esther is gone and the only clues about where she may have gone is an open window and a very threatening note made out to my dearest. In a nearby town a mysterious woman ends up at a coffee shop that Alex Gallo works at and changes everything. So as Quinn tries to find her roommate and Alex tries to find out more about his mysterious crush, things start to spiral out of control for both of them. I really liked the alternating perspectives of this. It's told from Quinn's perspective and Alex's perspective and the way that their stories interweave and just go together so well and I think that it was really well done. I loved how the two storylines eventually became one at the end and they connected just amazingly. I think that the pacing of this book was really well done. There were some scenes where it had my heart racing in anticipation anticipation and needing to know what happened next but then there was also the balance of the slower scenes which allowed me to like think more critically about what was happening and where the story was going to go and trying to figure out what was going on and how things were connected was pretty predictable at times and I was able to call a lot of what happened but I had a lot of theories that ended up being correct but then a couple of them were also wrong so that was a nice mix. I think that my only complaint for the book would be that the beginning was pretty slow but it makes sense because they needed to have like the backstory of where Esther was going and like build a mystery behind it so that's pretty much my only complaint but personally I love Mary Kubica's writing and every single book that I pick up of hers I end up liking even more than the last one so I think that this one's definitely my favorite of the three that I've read. The next book that I have is Follow Me by Angela Clark and I ended up giving this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. I had to read it because as part of my 5 star prediction video that I did like back in March I didn't realize that one of the books was second in a series so this is the first in the series so I had to read this one so that I can read the second one so that I can do my results video. It follows investigative journalist Freddy and police investigator Narcine who need to put their past behind them in order to work together on a new case. The serial killer is called the hashtag murderer and he puts out clues on Twitter that inform the police officers about who his next victim is going to be so Freddie and Narcine need to work together in order to catch him before it's too late. Honestly throughout this entire book I couldn't tell if I liked it or hated it. Like it was a very confusing experience for me. I think that the concept behind the murderer was interesting but it was just so predictable. I was able to call who the murderer was pretty much like couple chapters in so that was a little disappointing. The big secret that Freddie and Narcine were hiding was so underwhelming. I don't think that it produced the wow factor that the author was hoping for. Like I read it and was like oh like that's that's it? Okay sure. I also didn't like any of the characters. They were all very unlikable in my opinion and I didn't connect with any of them. I didn't care what happened to any of them. I was also a little bit skeptical about how naive the author made literally everybody on the police force when it came to social media and Twitter. Like they didn't know how it worked at all which didn't make sense because half the police officers were very very young. So just the fact that like literally nobody on the police force knew how to use Twitter just had me not believe in that point. Like there's no way that nobody knew how to use it. I also just found it very unbelievable that the police force was just going to allow a random 23 year old investigative journalist off the street into this huge murder crime and have no training whatsoever and just be like yep you're part of the force now like mm, no so overall just not for me I did not enjoy it so 
Looking forward to having to read the second book. The next book I read is Bloodlines by Rochelle Mead and this is like the spin-off series of The Vampire Academy which I loved so I was very disappointed that I didn't really enjoy this very much. I gave it a three out of five stars. It follows Sydney Sage who is part of a very elite group of humans called the Alchemists. Their sole purpose is to protect humans from vampires and their secrets. Sydney's last encounter with the vampires left her loyalty in question and so she thinks she's being punished when she gets a new assignment from the alchemist that she needs to protect Jill Dragomir. Jill is the sister of the new Maroi queen, Lissa. So Sydney is sent off to Palm Springs in order to pose as Jill's sister and roommate. So like I said, I was initially really excited about this book because I loved the Vampire Academy so much so was not happy when I found a lot of this book to be very problematic. It was really upsetting to me to be honest. Like at one point, a 15 and a 19 year old are dating and nobody is questioning it at all. And I just feel like that's a little bit creepy in my opinion. There's also a lot of mention around weight in this book. Sydney is described as a size four, but then she also just constantly is referring to herself as fat and chunky and chubby. And it's just like, mm, the audience for this book are young adults who are like 12 to like 15 and that's a very like iffy time to be told that a size 4 is frumpy. Like personally I'm a size 10 and I don't really get affected by the whole weight thing but when you read a book that says a size 4 is considered fat, you, you start to think. I just don't think that it's sending the best message. Aside from those like two issues that I have, I did enjoy the book. It is very predictable, but it is a fun read. And I also just really love Adrian, so I liked seeing him in this book. He's such a little precious cinnamon roll and I just want to protect him at all costs. I'm still not 100% sure how I feel about Sydney because at times she really pissed me off and she was super annoying, but then other times I really liked how determined she was to stand up for what she believed in. So I am probably going to continue with this series just because I want to see where it goes, but Overall, it's just been average for me so far. And then the final book that I'm going to talk about in this wrap-up is Not Even Bones by Rebecca Schaefer, and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The book follows Nita, who ever since she was a little girl has been working with her mother to cut up the corpses of supernatural beings and selling their body parts on the black market. So one day when her mother brings home a live boy and tells Nita that she needs to start dissecting him, she decides that she's going to set him free instead and this angers her mother. And then the next day she wakes up in a glass cage, the newest item to be sold on the black market. So the book has been compared to Dexter meets the Savage Song, which are two of my favorite stories, so I was super excited about it. So that being said, I had very high expectations of the book and I think that they fell a little bit short for me. I can definitely see where the comparisons lie, but I think that the book didn't shine the way I wanted it to. Like, don't get me wrong, I did really like the story and I found it very entertaining, but I think I wanted a little bit more from it because of the comparison between those two stories. I realize that it is a first book in a series so I'm very interested to see where it goes from here because we were left on a big cliffhanger. The book is very gory so if you have a weak stomach proceed with caution but it was really entertaining like I said. I think that the world building in this book was really well done and it was really interesting to learn about all the different monsters and what their different abilities were. I also thought it was really interesting that a lot of these unnatural beings looked like humans and walked around like humans so you didn't really know who was supernatural and who wasn't. I think that the biggest downfall of the book for me was that it felt that some of the sections were very repetitive. There were full lines that were just repeated throughout the story so it felt like I read a good chunk of the book already. The book is full of unlikable characters but I ended up loving every single one of them. Nita is probably one of my favorites. She's very self-aware and she made logical justifications for all of her actions which I really liked and I really liked how she put her survival above everybody else's. She's not like your typical soft heroine who like lays down for other people to save them like no she's gonna get the fuck out before she saves your ass and she's just such an anti-hero and I love her so much. I think that Covet was definitely my favorite character though. He's an unnatural called a Zanny who feeds off of other people's pain so he pretty much tortures people to live 
and his character development was just so well done and I loved learning his backstory and learning more about him and honestly I just want a story that follows him. Maybe that'll come in the next book. I also really liked how there was no romance in this book although it was obvious that romance is going to come in the next couple of books. Like I said, this is the first in a new series, so I'm very interested to see where the author takes us next in the story. Alright guys, so that was the first seven books that I read for November. I'll have the next six up on Wednesday, so stay tuned for that. Let me know down below if you guys have read any of these and what you've thought of them, and I'll see you all in my next video. Goodbye!